Thank you very much for the warm welcome and great to be at an open source monitoring conference. I didn't even know that this existed just a few years ago, but it's great to see the events had a long following. Uh, my slides are logs.io, which that's where I worked as of Friday, but as of yesterday, I'm currently running the product organization at Ivan. Um, so that's brand new news for me. And um, I'm still going to be working in open source and data platforms. Uh, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how observability is moving towards unification and some of the things that are happening in open source. I'm also going to talk a little bit about licensing too because it's important to understand what open source means and a lot of it gets weaved together with things that aren't quite open source and it can have implications on your business. Uh, my background is operations, security, performance engineering. Um, I shifted roles halfway into my career and I was an analyst at Gartner for four years covering this space. And then I've been at a few vendors since, and this is my second day at Avon, so that's, that's where I am today. Um, <laughs> so uh, a little bit of basics on observability. Um, I know that this stuff is kind of table stakes for most of you. You're way past the point, but understanding that there are separate signals and oftentimes separate tools that we use. We heard a lot about metrics in Prometheus and Isinga. We haven't heard a lot about logging or tracing, but I'm going to talk about those signals. They're really important. Uh, one of the projects that I do a lot of work on is, in, is Jaeger, um, one of the maintainers and contributors to Jaeger. So if anyone wants to chat about tracing, that's kind of my passion and what I'm into uh, and have been for quite some time. The challenges that you get uh, when you move to logging and, and tracing specifically really has to do with the volume of data and in the case of logging the fact that it's not structured and standardized yet. You're going to hear from my former colleague uh, in the next talk about open telemetry where we're trying, we've standardized the metrics and the tracing. The logging is still challenging to say the least, uh, but the goal of the project is really to create the semantics and structure to actually help solve this in a more concrete manner. Um, eventually, there will be more signals. Um, those of you that were at KubeCon in Valencia or just a few weeks ago in Detroit, there's a lot of talk about profiling. That's the hot thing these days is eBPF and profiling. So there'll probably be another circle here. Probably will go here that's profiling because it tends to use a lot of event-based data and metric data, so we'll see. Um, there's also a cool white paper. Um, I'm going to post my slides. There's a link to it uh, that's created by the Observability Working Group. That's a white paper about observability, and it's, it's actually pretty good and comprehensive. A lot of people contributed to it. Um, that's where this little icon comes from, too. Um, so a lot of talk about monitoring at this conference and observability and monitoring are a bit intertwined and complex. Uh, monitoring is definitely a use case for it and oftentimes you'll hear about events and there's a lot of discussion in open telemetry about events and logs and are they the same or are they different. Uh, one can think of an, a log as an event or an event as a log. Uh, but obviously some folks have different opinions as to the semantics of an event should it have a status, which a log doesn't always have. So there's a lot of um, debate about events and logs. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, metrics are super important for those running operations. And there's a cool talk on SLOs and SLAs coming up, I think, the end of today or the end of tomorrow that... Uh, definitely we'll dig into that one. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to hear. Um, APM is basically a combination of mostly metrics and distributed tracing. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's a very big market. So some people say, you know, we're getting rid of APM and going to tracing. In theory, APM has always done tracing, at least for the last 10 years. Uh, so this magic quadrant from Gartner 
in the market size. Most of these tools are doing tracing to some extent. And the leading tools in this market commercially are all doing distributed tracing and have for many years. Um, and then the other kind of piece of the market is this infrastructure monitoring, which is kind of like individual tools. But just so you understand the commercial aspect of the market and the vendors involved. Um, but this is interesting because um, you'll notice that this magic quadrant is now called application performance monitoring and observability. That's new. So Gartner is shifting slowly from like APM to observability, and I think you're going to see that like happen in the market over the next few years. So it's kind of just good to see. Um, observability is tricky because when you want to deal with open source, and these are kind of diagrams of some of the basic architectures, up here is sort of basically the ELK stack. When you scale it out, you've got to manage Kafka. You've got to deal with a lot of components. Similarly, when you look at the Grafana stack uh, in Prometheus itself, there's a lot of other components that you have to deal with. Long-term storage, how do I scale it? How do I manage data? And similarly with Jaeger, once you scale it out, you, you have to deal with Spark. You have to deal with a lot of other technologies. These all have different UIs and different tools, and it's a big challenge because uh, the architectures are different and complex. So a lot of organizations struggle with all of the engineering work that it takes to make these things operate. Um, but open source is super popular. These are some kind of numbers. When you look at some of the bigger commercial tools, the number of customers, and then you look at the open source um, different tools out there, and there's orders of magnitude, uh, larger amounts of consumption. So when we think about this huge market that's dominated by several players, and you look at open source, everyone's using open source. That's really the future of where things are going. So just kind of puts it into perspective a little bit when you see the, the numbers here, the sheer scale of things. Um, the other thing to be aware of is the software foundations. Probably most of us know the Linux Foundation, the CNCF, and Apache. I can tell you as someone that uh, works a lot in the CNCF along with a few other folks here, uh, the amount of support that they give us, uh, helping us with licenses, the ability to have Slack, GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions, being able to run our CI and CD pipelines, this is all super valuable for an open source community. Making sure that we have the right legal protections, the right uh, licensing, all of that important stuff is really what these foundations give communities, and it's, it's really important stuff what they do for us, because as a community, it just, these projects would not exist. We probably would not have Prometheus, we would probably not have Kubernetes, we wouldn't have Jaeger, and countless other tools. We might not even have Linux in a concrete way, so it's super important what these foundations do. And the other thing that they do um, is they really help bring the community together and market. So, like, everyone knows Kubernetes because the CNCF spends so much money marketing it and promoting it and getting projects to come together. Uh, and that's really what the value of these foundations are. And they require a few different things. They really require that the projects themselves have the right types of licensing and those of you probably know about the licensing changes we've seen from Mongo, we've seen from Elastic, we've even seen it from Grafana where they've shifted, still open source, but it's a license that you have to be careful with. And these uh, open source software foundations don't allow code like LGPL into the projects. So I can tell you in Jaeger, and also we had to do some work in open telemetry to make sure that we didn't contaminate licenses because the CNCF requires Apache 2, free for everyone to use for whatever purpose they want to use it for. And these other licenses can be restrictive. Um, I can tell you that at companies like Google, they don't allow any LGPL to be used in the entire company because it can sneak into the code base and then cause the whole thing to have to be relicensed. So 
it's definitely tricky. Uh, I think this is going to continue where we're going to see things relicensed and changed because mostly for money and business purposes. That's kind of what it comes down to. Um, but it's really tough on the community. Um, so this is uh, kind of the CNCF statement on this is that you have to be really careful when you're writing code and contributing that you're not contaminating. And we've actually had to build a lot of uh, compliance checks into our continuous integration system for Jaeger to make sure that we don't contaminate things. So we do license checks and build S-bombs and do all of this fun stuff in the community just to try to make sure we don't contaminate anything. Um, and I hope that the Grafana changes don't cause an impact on Prometheus over time because Grafana is the main UI that we all use to analyze time series. We've seen a lot of advancement in the UI for Prometheus itself to do queries and analytics, but it's not as powerful as what Grafana provides. So Grafana and Prometheus are very tied together. I mean, I, I don't know anyone that's not using Grafana with Prometheus. I mean, it's, it's kind of the de facto. So I hope that the license stays the way that it is and it doesn't change because it will definitely cause issues in the community and issues with the CNCF. Um, so similarly, this is kind of the Google statement that is for internal and external use that they're, you know, that they don't allow it. Amazon doesn't allow it. Facebook doesn't. They don't want anyone using non-Apache, basically, code inside the company because it's a, it's a big risk. Um, so just kind of showing that and in the concern around it. Um, keep an eye on it. Your lawyers might care about it. You probably don't, but it's definitely something that can be concerning. So open search, I'm going to kind of shift a little and talk a little bit about some of the cool projects. Um, and open search, for those of you that don't know, is a fork of Elasticsearch 7.10, which is the last Apache 2 version. And Amazon led a fork uh, to continue the uh, Apache 2 version of Elasticsearch under this new name. And uh, it's, it's been doing quite well. It's definitely gaining in popularity. I looked at GitHub stars. There's kind of, there's two metrics you can look at in open source. It's like lines of code and commits or stars. Both of them are kind of not the best uh, measure, but something that we can at least use. And I kind of compared some of the other tools together and how the star growth is done. And uh, open search is, is doing pretty well. Uh, it's been out for about a year and a half, getting close to two years now. Yeah, more like a year and a half. And uh, it's definitely uh, picking up. And the focus of open search is how do we make Elasticsearch easier to scale, cheaper to operate, things that are challenging today with Elasticsearch uh, somewhat. So. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a really interesting project. There's also been a lot of work on plugins, which I'm going to talk about. These are kind of like new modules in Kibana, which is now called Open Search Dashboards. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, and uh, some of the cool things that are going on with the project is today, uh, some of the challenges are when you run a big cluster, each of the nodes has to contain data and replicate it n number of times and you have to balance the data across the cluster. This is really challenging. For, for anyone that's run any type of scale, you're always dealing with hotspots. You're always moving shards. You're always trying to balance the data. You can automate a lot of it, but it's super tricky. And so the idea is how do we move the architecture of open search over time to be a bunch of microservices that are accessing shared uh, object storage with a bunch of caching in between. This lowers the cost, makes it easier to scale. Uh, you can do balancing much more effectively. And so that's kind of one of the big things that, uh, that is, our, that is uh, well underway today in the project. Uh, and you'll see it next year for sure. Um, and there's already pieces of it done. So it's, uh, it's getting there, but it definitely will need another six months before it's really usable. And then some of the other cool stuff, these are some of the plugins that have been built. Um, and uh, a lot of these are 
either more advanced types of uh, use cases, anomaly detection, adding better languages. Uh, probably the biggest challenge with Elasticsearch is the Lucene query language. It's not intuitive. It's not so easy to use. People just say, why can't I use you know, an English type query language or SQL? So they've built all of that stuff into OpenSearch um, natively. It's, it's quite nice and definitely can make it a lot more usable. And so that's kind of what's been going on in the engine side of the project. These are some of the big initiatives. And I'll talk about how the unification of these signals is going, because there's some really cool stuff there. So on the front end side, there's this uh, open search dashboards. This is what you may know as Kibana, you know, part of the Elk stack. So yesterday's release of open search was supposed to have the first version of PromQL support uh, in the query language. Uh, it got slipped, so it's probably going to be out in, I think it's January, it'll probably come out. What this will allow you to do is you'll be able to query any PromQL compatible data source from open search dashboards. And why that's important is then we can start analyzing logs and metrics together. Uh, and start doing like graphs where you combine logging and metrics, and I'll talk about tracing in a minute. Um, and there's already quite a bit of anomaly detection. So one of the things that I was hoping would come in Prometheus sooner is more machine learning, more anomaly detection. How can we automate uh, get, getting insights out of metrics that are deviating or changing? And in open search, we already have that. It's part of the engine, the anomaly detection. There's a whole bunch of different algorithms that have already been built. And uh, we'll be able to use those on time series, which is, is pretty nice. Um, those that see the slide, the roadmap's totally public. Everything is obviously community driven. Uh, my new company, Ivan, has several maintainers of open search. There are many other companies uh, committing code to it, so it's a good community. Um, obviously, Amazon's still leading it. They have a very large team building it at, at Amazon, but everything's public, it's out in the open. So um, the other piece is this, uh, this plugin, which is a SQL plugin, and it creates a uh, piped query language. And so this will allow you to actually analyze uh, time series and log data together. Um, you basically can string together different statements and pipe them together, something you can't do in Lucene. And it lets you uh, substitute different languages so you can combine uh, SQL and other types of query languages together. Um, and like I said, the Prometheus connector slipped, so it'll probably be in January, hopefully. Uh, most of the work is done, like the code, I looked at it uh, again last night, it's mostly finished. Some of the UI hasn't been finished for, which is why it slipped, so I think it'll be pretty, uh, pretty good. And there's a link to the code for those that get the PDF, you'll be able to link directly to the work that's going on on the, um, on the Prometheus connector and the language uh, level stuff. Um, the other piece is the observability plugin. This has uh, been out for quite some time and has been improved a lot. And as you can see, I can uh, do aggregated trace views uh, in this. So taking a look at my front end service and the red metrics, basically the latency, error rate, and throughput um, data. And then I can drill into individual traces and see a basic trace view. It has a bunch of other features. Uh, Right now, the challenge is that it needs this component in front of it called data prepper that basically puts it into the right schema. Uh, you can send directly from open telemetry to data prepper. Uh, that's part of the pipeline that exists today. Um, and you can also do all kinds of logging. So that data prepper component can also replace log stash. It can do a lot of other things. It's designed to be more of a backend service. Uh, and you can send, obviously, logs to it as well. Um, metrics, super early, like I said. First is language support. Then you're going to see better visualizations. You're going to see other improvements for time, time series analysis. 
And, uh, and so the idea is that this observability plugin becomes a good place to analyze logs, metrics, and traces. This is obviously going to take probably a year before it's good. Uh, but in that process, if there are things that you want to see, open an issue, get involved in a discussion. If you want, contribute code. I mean, there's lots of things that can be done in the project and it's super active. So uh, definitely get involved in the project. Uh, there's regular meetings. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good community. I did want to talk about Jaeger. It's been around for a while um, and it's uh, heavily adopted. It's similar to Prometheus. It's one of the 12 graduated projects of the CNCF, including Prometheus, including uh, Kubernetes. So um, it's widely adopted. It has nice visualizations for traces. You can use a variety of backends. We've actually had folks contribute uh, new backends. So you can use ClickHouse with Jaeger now. You can use um, someone just did Timescale DB, uh, which is a newer time series database built on. Uh, Postgres. Uh, so there's a lot of different data storage options. The official ones are Cassandra, Elasticsearch, and OpenSearch um, in terms of the storage. And Jaeger natively supports open telemetry. That's the main way you ingest the data. Uh, my previous company, Logs.io, contributed this really cool way to visualize uh, Prometheus metrics inside Jaeger. It's the monitoring tab here and it gives you those same basic metrics, the latency, the error rate, the request rate, and then you can see it per service down here. Uh, so this is a cool integration. It works with any Prometheus backend that supports PromQL, and it brings together metrics and tracing, kind of makes it more usable. Um, but I think the future is really going to be um, moving to something like open search dashboards. Uh, the way that this works is if those of you that are familiar with open telemetry, if you're not, uh, Dotan's talk, which is right after mine, um, he will go into what open telemetry is. But this is basically how the pipeline works. Uh, so the traces come into open telemetry. It writes out uh, metrics into any Prometheus backend, and then it sends the trace data to Jaeger. So it gives you kind of two distinct paths out of open telemetry, and then you can visualize them here. You can visualize them in Grafana as well, uh, the time series data. So there is some unification you can do today already um, with Grafana, some of it with Jaeger, um, but the future I think is really something like open search dashboards. Um, which will always be open source and you know, I think has a very good future and a lot of investment. Um, like I said, some of the things just in, in wrap up here, uh, unifying these things, I think part of the goal is making sure that things stay Apache too. Everyone in the community can use them. Anyone can build a SaaS service using them. Anyone can include them in their services and products. There's no risk uh, in using Apache 2 code because it's open for all, and that's really the goal of, of the Apache Software Foundation and the license behind it. Um, and so, like I said, uh, Grafana is a great option for unification today, but it's very focused on time series, and I think open search is, is kind of where things are going uh, when it comes to open source observability. Uh, so keep an eye on it. Um, there's also some other cool small projects. There's this one called Signaz. It's a really cool early stage uh, project that is also Apache 2 and unifies some of that. It actually runs on a ClickHouse database. It's, it's a very interesting project. However, it doesn't support PromQL yet and the metrics aren't equivalent. So I think there's still some challenges, but it's definitely a cool project to check out that's evolving quite well. So I think uh, I've got a couple of minutes for questions, but that was what I wanted to bring, bring to you all, and thanks for listening.